Welcome to the Cisco Voice Gateways and Gatekeepers series. My name is Jeremy Chara. I'll be sitting down and chatting with you as we work through this series and explain the mysteries of voice gateways and gatekeepers uh, to you. So to start things off, what I'd like to do in this opening nugget of the whole series is to give you an overview. I want to start off by talking about the CCVP certification tracks because they're unique. Unlike every other professional level track in Cisco, there's two of these, meaning there's two ways that you can get your CCVP. And I want to talk through both of them, what the advantages and disadvantages are of going different directions and, and why you might choose one track over the other. I also want to talk about the feel of the Cisco Voice Gateways and Gatekeepers series as a whole, meaning the goal that Cisco had for this certification exam and, and the knowledge they wanted to transfer for those that are going after it is a seem it seems to be at least to me a little different than all the other certification exams that I've that I've taken from Cisco it's it's a very unique exam so I'm going to talk about that and what what we're going to be looking at and why this series is going to be a little bit different as we go through it Finally, I want to talk about how you can get the most from this series. How, using this CBT Nugget series, how can you sit down and absorb the most to get the most when you're either preparing for the certification exam or going out and doing this in the real world? Well, let's start things off by looking at the Cisco certification track in a big picture sense. Cisco is always changing the certification track. Something new is always coming up. They, they change it to keep it up to date, to make it dynamic, and to, <laughs> frankly, make it hard. This is one of the hardest certification tracks in the industry, even comparing to other vendors. So it all begins with the CCENT certification which is the kind of welcome to Cisco Networks kind of world. This is what a network is. You know, we used to have sneaker net, you know, those kind of discussions of, of what networks are all about and the basics of Cisco inter-networking. You then move into CCNA and take the exam to become a Cisco Certified Network Associate, which is the most popular Cisco certification in the industry. This is a platform certification, meaning you can't go anywhere in Cisco without having a CCNA. You can't move into CCNA Voice or CCNA Security or all these CCNPs, uh, CCSPs, CCVPs, without jumping off the platform of CCNA. It's a required prerequisite. The one exception of that, and this is kind of ironic, is the CCIE level certification. You can actually get a CCIE without having any other Cisco certifications. <laughs> Cisco will take your money all day long, you know, because this exam, uh, I, you know what, I, I think they even increased the price. I could be off on this, but last I checked, it was $1,250. It may even be up to $1,500. Uh, so $1,250 to take that practical lab exam. Uh, and most people, as they study, will naturally pass through these. So it's, I, I have never met a person who just has a CCIE certification and no other Cisco certifications. Uh, I'd be impressed if I ever would. So we're focusing on voice here. So if you are moving into the voice world, you jump off the platform of CCNA and then get your CCNA voice. Now, as I am recording this, it is at the beginning of 2009. As of June, I, I believe it's June or July, one of the J months, June or July, CCNA voice becomes a required prerequisite to the CCVP. So theoretically, if, uh, you know, I'm at the beginning of 2009 right now, if you studied really fast, and I don't know when you're listening to this, but uh, if you studied really fast, you could get the CCVP uh, without having a CCNA voice. But I can tell you, the CCNA voice is an awesome certification. It really gives you the big picture. Uh, you know, it's kind of like CCNA. CCNA is, I, I have to say, my favorite certification because it's kind of like the coolest of the cool Cisco technologies, one right after the other. CCNA voice is kind of that way. It's setting up a voice network for a uh, small organization using Call Manager Express, and just just the amount of cool stuff that you learn in that is is uh, off the charts. But anyhow, after uh, 2009 June or July, you're going to be required to take that and then move into the CCVP. Now I'm going to expose the CCVP, the two different tracks that you can get into, and then if you choose, you can move on to the CCIE voice after that. But let me just hit the statistics and the renewal policies that Cisco have. They're incredible. Uh, first off, statistically, most people go this way first. And uh, that's, that's what I did. I got the CCNA, CCNP, and then I got the CCIE routing and switching. Then I came back. This was long before the CCNA voice had ever even been dreamed up. Uh, and I got my CCVP, then I went for my CCSP. So I kind of 
branched out into most of those worlds. I am a I am a typical statistic of of Cisco. I went the routing and switching track first, so it's very difficult for me not to recommend that to people. When people say, well. Which, which should I do first? I'm like, ah, just go after the CCNP because it's kind of like there's so much valuable stuff that you learn in here that applies to both of these worlds that, you know, it, for me, it's kind of like, oh, you just, you can't replace that. But with that being said, people do. People, you know, and that's one of the reasons Cisco came up with these CCNA security and so on is to really give people a bigger and broader base before they move into the CCSP and, or, or CCVP realms. So it is definitely possible to go that route. Um, that's all I have to say on that. I was thinking I had something else, but that's that's it. Um, each exam has an expiration of three years, and each certification has an expiration of three years, meaning you can't get a CCNP and just sit on it for the rest of your life expecting it to stay valid. If you don't do anything, every three years it will expire. My hope is that you will never let that happen, and Cisco is doing everything they can to make it as easy as possible not to let that happen. Here's the here's the amazing thing about the recertification. And I, you know, I just want to like find somebody at Cisco and just give them a hug for doing this. When you get, let's say a CCNP or a CCV, we're talking about voice. So let's say you get the CCVP, you immediately, well, I I just let me let me work through this smaller. As you take individual exams in the CCVP, let's say C voice. You pass C voice, you now have an exam that lasts for three years. C voice is valid for three years. Now let's say you know you pass C voice, a year later you come back and you take CIPT, the call manager exam. Well when you pass CIPT you now have a CIPT exam that lasts for three years and C voice gets a fresh three years on it. It automatically renews the C voice exam. So each exam will continue to renew the other exams in the series that you have, and then it gets even better than that, is where I was going. Let's say you get the CCVP. You now have a Cisco Certified Voice Professional Certification that lasts for three years. Now, if you decide, you know, let's say two and a half years later, you decide, you know, I'm going to go after my CCNP, and you pass one exam in that CCNP track. Just one. You don't have to get the CCNP. You just pass one exam in that track. You automatically get a fresh three years here. So, you know, time goes on. You get your CCNP. You now have a CCVP and a CCNP that lasts for three years. Two and a half years later, you decide, ah, I'm going to get my CCSP. You pass one exam here, and it automatically renews both of these for three years. Isn't that awesome? So awesome. You don't have to keep just retaking exams that you've taken again and again. Now, I should also mention the CCIE because this one has an expiration of two years. Uh, and it's, it's kind of interesting the way they work it. Uh, every two years, you have to pass the qualification exam for the CCIE. So I'm saying the, the CCIE has two, two exams, a $300 uh, qualification exam, and then a tw current, I think, twelve hundred fifty dollar practical exam that you take. Now, when you pass both of those things, you get a CCIE that lasts for two years, and every lower level certification automatically gets renewed for another three years. It, it works in the same way. So, every two years to renew your CCIE, you have to just pass that qualification, the written uh, hundred question exam, uh, for three hundred dollars, and you get a fresh two years on your CCIE, and it renews all the other ones for three years automatically. So, just so I don't have to keep saying that, you get the concept, right? You pass any exam in the professional or IE level uh, certification, and everything, even and even the CCNAs, everything gets renewed for a fresh three years. Uh, so, again, the, the huge point that Cisco wants to make is they're not about making you retake exams you've already taken. They're about getting you to continue on in your studies, and they, they figure if you're continuing on and you're passing these levels of exams, you're obviously keeping up with some of the technology that you've studied in voice and security and things like that. So, I should also mention, in the CCIE, I said they expire after two years, but it's not like you lose it. And that, that's, that scared me. I have the CCIE and routing and switching. And uh, there was actually a time where I forgot to renew it. And I got this email like a week before it expired from Cisco. Oh, your CCIE is about to, <gasps> you know, I'm like, no, no, it can't expire. So, I, you know, I'm rapidly studying. And then I found out uh, that I couldn't register. All the, the testing centers in Arizona were booked that week. And I'm, I'm calling Cisco. You know, I'm shedding tears. Guys, please don't do this to me. And they said, oh, no, don't worry. If it expires, it just becomes inactive. You still have a one year after the two years to renew it. And talk about a sigh of relief. It just means that you're no longer considered a CCIE active 
uh, until you pass that qualification and then you go active again. Now, if you let the, it lapse past that one year inactivity point, then you lose it. And that, that's where tears are shed. And, and you know, it's, it, it, I'm telling you, once you get the CCIE, I, I will be 92 years old, you know, on a, on a, an IV in a hospital and I'll be, guys, I've got to go take it. You know, I've got to renew. I will never, ever let that expire. It was so painful to get. So, I think I've said enough about that. Everything certification-wise is right there on Cisco's website. Now let's dive into the CCVPs specifically. CCVP is so unique because Cisco has two certification tracks to make it happen. It's not like one is more valuable than the other or, you know, people are going to ask, are you a track one or a track two? Or, or you might hear people say the old CCVP track or track one or the new CCVP track, track two. It's not, it's not like that. If you get the CCVP, you have a CCVP and there's many exams that cross over between them. Now let me talk about, uh, first off, the reason why they created two tracks. Uh, track one w was the original. It came out when they first introduced the CCVP certification. And what they had was they had C voice, which is kind of, and I, I, you can take them in any order that you want, but I put them in the order that most people take them on the screen right here. C voice is kind of the welcome to voice and, you know, talks about PBX systems, where they came from, you know, it's, it's welcome to the voice world. Then most people would move after C voice. That's really integrating voice over IP into the legacy voice world and understanding that world. Most people moved into CC, or, or sorry, CIPT, Cisco IP telephony, and it's either 4.1 or 6.0. Now that represents the two versions of call manager that are out there. 4.1 is your Windows version and is still, right now at the beginning of 2009, the most popular version that people have in their environments because it's, it's the first one that came out and it's stable, it works well, and a lot of people see Call Manager like they see PBX systems as in, well, if it's not broke, why, why fix it? You know, why would you upgrade to 6.0 if the Windows version works just fine? But over time, things are moving in the direction of the Linux appliance version, which is CIPT 6.0. They are, I'm not going to say very different products, they, they just have a very different look. Uh, 6.0 and the Call Manager 6.0 looks very different than 4.1, visually speaking, but just about all of the concepts are the same. But Cisco is really adding all of the major cool new killer features into 6.0. 4.0. One, two, three, it's, they have 4.2, 4.3, all these different versions of, of um, call manager that are out there in the Windows sense. It's still getting new features, it's still getting support, but you can really feel the trend. Everything's trying to move that direction. Now, when they first created the CCVP track, there wasn't that much to call manager, as in you could do it in one series of training. You don't, you don't have to uh, really have a, a massive breadth of, of understanding, but as things evolved, security got introduced, video telephony got introduced, and it just became too much. Cisco ended up creating in the track two a split exam to where you now have CIPT1, which is the foundations of call manager, you know, the, the core configuration, and then CIPT2, which is what I would say the, the knickknacks, you know, kind of all of the, the cool stuff, like how do you encrypt your voice? How do you uh, secure your call manager? How do you um, do video telephony? You know, all of, the, all of the cool stuff, they couldn't fit into the core concepts. They created a second exam from that. So the strange thing is, in track one, you have one exam, for CIPT that on that one exam it en encompasses the majority of the topics of both of these. You're not going to get the same amount of depth on this one exam but you may end up with pretty much the same questions that are on CIPT1 and CIPT2 just not as many of them because it's a single exam. So that, that I would say is probably the main thing that Cisco did when they upgraded to track 2 is they just put more call manager stuff because call manager is the core of everything. Now, most people after that will go after QoS, which seems like a really easy exam, but it's, it's actually much more difficult than, than you may think. A lot of nuances with quality of service. Same, same exam in both tracks. Uh, notice right here, we are in the Gateway Gatekeeper series, and that is the one that was removed from track two. That is an interesting decision by Cisco, and I can see why they did it. Uh, C Voice is all about integrating... <laughs> 